Hello. Hello. Welcome everybody to another Akira development vlog update. Mm, this is the second one that we have been doing. Uh, we just started doing it probably a year ago. <laughs> we did the first one like a year ago and this is the second one. So yeah, we're very consistent with this type of live streaming. But anyway, um, let's wait a couple of more minutes for people to join. Mm, I'm sorry for my voice if it sounds weird, but I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I'm mm, using um, like a throat candy, and it's gonna be it's gonna sound pretty weird. But let me know if you can um, hear me properly, uh, if the audio quality is good. The video is gonna be probably good, but hey, welcome everyone. Oh, people are starting to join. This is great. This is gonna be awesome. Uh, so yeah, let's wait a couple more minutes for um, just to let people join in. And then we're gonna start right away by doing or by having a quick overview of the uh, current status of Akira. What have we been working on? Uh, all the features that we have right now, uh, what's working, what is not working, <laughs> and what's gonna happen soon. Um, first of all, actually, let me switch to uh, my beautiful face. Hello, how's it going, guys? Uh, so we have, oh, 20 people watching. Oh, this is phenomenal. Thank you so much for joining this live streaming. This is very exciting. Heckle, hello. Yes, a lot of programming jokes on the chat they need to happen um just a, a little disclaimer if i suddenly drop out of the live streaming or my uh i don't know obs can crash or whatever if i disappear all of a sudden don't worry i'm gonna reconnect right after so just don't go away just wait for me to to come back it's not that if i crash the connection if uh, i disappear the live stream is over until i say that it's over it's not gonna be over so just stick around until um i'm back uh so What's gonna happen in this live streaming? I'm gonna give you a full overview of what we have right now fully working on Akira all the things that you can do and then uh, I'm gonna show you some future plans uh, what we want to implement right away probably this month we're gonna have uh, another sprint of implementation features uh, then a little bit of a cool announcement and then we're gonna go through all your questions and by starting with a very interesting question that I, I get asked all the times and I'm gonna start by answering the question then you guys can ask all the questions that you want in the chat but let's get started I guess um, let's switch to another streaming thing okay so uh, of course Akira it's all on github you can check everything and probably now it's almost time to remove this UI mock-up thing because we have a fully functional UI that it's pretty much identical to what we have right here so it, that's that's pretty it's pretty good look i'm pretty happy but let's start akira right away and uh, yeah this is the beautiful software actually let me let me shrink it down a little bit so you can see the edges of the window let's say like this it looks good right yeah looks good okay Mm, is that pretty standard software like it's pretty standard interface the thing that just landed this morning is the ability to trigger um, a shortcut overview and overlay pretty similar to what elementary os um, currently has the color it comes with um, don't worry if you see the text that it's kind of weird the spacing is not great it's all blown out that's because i'm using a 4k monitor with larger text so it's like the ui is not scale up but the text is blown up because otherwise i cannot read it so if something looks out of balance it's because of my setup i have my text it's all it's all massive <laughs> just because at least i can read it but this is a great overview of all the currently fully functional shortcuts that we have and this was done manually i manually wrote all these shortcuts and created this page in the future um probably during the beta cycle we're gonna trend like uh, transition all these manually written shortcuts into g settings so we want to give you guys the ability to update the shortcuts and customize the shortcuts whatever however you want so all these 
overview will happen automatically we're gonna grab all the shortcuts save all the accelerators as you should say that's the technical name all the accelerators saved in the g settings of akira and we're gonna print them here and in this overview you're gonna also have the ability to maybe double click on one of these and type a new accelerator so you can just straight up customize it right on these uh, overview uh, but this is this is pretty standard we have some nice little popover menus where you can add the items we have the export panel uh, we have the preferences that didn't change much since last time um, the interface you can switch from dark theme to light theme you can show the buttons or the buttons label this is probably gonna be the first um how you launch Akira the first time with the uh, labels underneath the header bar buttons which it looks kind of weird it's like too big blown out but at least um you can um you can recognize which buttons are what uh, right away without uh, spending too much time in going on rollover and trying to read the tooltips. But then you can customize it by removing the labels or if you want to also use symbolic icons, everything turns symbolic. So everything is out of the way. And I saw a lot of users, they like to use it this way. Uh, dark mode, symbolic. All your icons are out of the way, are super tiny and small and everything. It's it's more usable for someone, but yeah, it's it's good to have this flexibility. I kind of like it use it this way with like rich text colors icons and good stuff. So um, we have uh, the last panel in the preferences, which you can control the default shapes. This is something that we implemented a couple of months ago and was great. After implementing these, uh, some of the users that were testing Akira ooh, sorry, started doing some, um, some design tests because with this panel, you can control the default fill color and default border and border width. So by default, now if I hit R and I click and drag, I can generate my uh, rectangle. And by default, I have this background color and border color at one pixel. And this is the default settings that you can uh, implement in your default shapes parameter. So if I say, okay, all my uh, shapes right now i want it to be filled blue and i want a purple border which is six pixel wide uh it doesn't matter which shape i create they're all gonna be they're all gonna have that default setting there which is which is okay <laughs> it just gives you the flexibility to control uh, how your shapes are generated by default and it's very very handy you don't have to constantly um change color or reset it or do something else if you don't like it or even if you don't want the border at all uh, you can simply deactivate the border so you can generate a shape without a border and it just it's there you can also of course you can add a border and just do it directly in the control panel and the fields panel you can control everything so pretty much right now it works and behaves like a regular software like you expect to uh, you can control the opacity the alpha of separated colors so the border and uh, the fields they're completely uh, separated right now but also you have the global opacity control and this transform panel I really really like it because it's really intuitive to use and it's very easy so you can control the global opacity of your entire shape without the necessity of tinkering with oh I feel a border I have to control the two opacity to have the uh, desired effect result no you have just one opacity uh, layer that affects uh, one opacity feature um, setting that affects your entire shape which is which is pretty good um, in terms of the transformation panel it works as expected it's like there's nothing much to discuss about it let me delete some shapes actually uh, you can create a default shape here and it tells you the position y and z of course you can change these with your keyboards uh, if you hit shift, it goes up and down by 10. If you just go up and down, uh, it goes just by one by one. You can click and drag 
on this little icon to increase and decrease uh you can click and hold because that's the default gtk spin buttons and you can activate the lock ratio so it doesn't matter what's the size of this thing and you keep resizing it maintains the ratio uh, we implemented a super cool thing to um, allow flipping of the uh, items so you can see when i go lower the one pixel threshold margin automatically these two buttons uh, they get enabled because it means that the shape now it's flipped so it doesn't matter how much you um if you create a shape and you flip it and flip it again and you don't remember oh this is a straight shape or it's flipped uh the settings are remember in the panel so this was flipped horizontally and vertically you can revert it back and it does exactly the same old song creation when you create a shape you scroll and then no i want to actually create the other way it just simply flips the shape so we don't have to calculate weird things it just simply literally flips the item so um which is which is good uh that learn ask why don't you make programming video anymore uh, because i'm coding akira because i'm I, I i shifted focus on on coding akira i do programming videos like not as many as i used to do before but akira is more important uh right now we also have some border radius option um which for now you just can't control the global border radius but in the future we're gonna have the ability to control uh, non-uniform borders there's a, a currently working like a, a whip pr which is um we need to wait until uh the goo canvas thing get merged in order to control each border radius independently but a uh, super cool thing we have the auto scale corner so right now if i set for example the border radius to yeah let's say 20 pixels um uh yeah this is a bug auto scale it sorry if i set it to 20 pixel like this and i resize it it doesn't matter how big or small i make it the radius is still 20 pixel and you can see that these handle changes position because the size of these um the width and height of these element change so we change the limit of that slider you cannot grow a border radius bigger than the actual side of the sh size of the shape so this is why it's happening but if you want to maintain always the same uh, border ratio uh, sorry border radius to width and a height ratio you can remove the uniform the sorry uh, the auto scale corners so you can in, in activate the auto scale corner and we're going to keep the ratio so you can see now the value of the border radius is increasing while i'm um, increasing the size of the shape so these border radius is identical in terms of ratio from what it was at 20 pixel when your shape was smaller so you can keep this as out of scale border it's pretty pretty standard thing uh does it support blur not yet uh we're gonna have it in the future all these gush and blur box shadows and extra extra fancy things is gonna happen they're gonna happen in the future uh but let's say auto scale corner uh, checked um i'm gonna continue a little bit thank you for the question you can keep writing the question in the chat i'm gonna continue doing the quick overview um and then i'm gonna jump on the questions in the chat so uh, just to not lose the train of thought and all this good stuff you notice that we have a super fancy um, layers panel that giacomo alberini which is in the chat say hi to him because it's an awesome italian developer um implemented to carry implementing the layers panel and it's fantastic so we can create as many shapes as we want as we want and let's change a little bit of this color here let's change this color here let's create another shape okay now we have all these shapes uh you can see when i go and roll over on one also the corresponding layer it hovers up so you know exactly which layer it's gonna uh, you're gonna select we're gonna have the other way around as well we're gonna implement it when you go and roll over on the layer also the shape it's gonna highlight with this hover effect uh, 
Um, when you select it, it shows this little uh, orange uh, border there. So it's selected, you can change it. And same thing when you select a layer, it select, of course, the shape corresponding to the layer, which is super, super fancy and cool. This is great because if you have multiple shapes, for example, you have a complex design with a million different uh, object items that are all the same colors and you have no idea, okay, which one is which, what I'm selecting. And maybe you're a crazy person that likes to uh, rename all your layers. Well, not a crazy person. You're a very organized person <laughs> that you like to uh, rename all your layers so you can like left one or like, I don't know, top, bottom, and you don't know which one. Okay, which one is the left one or the top, bottom? I don't know. So first you can identify by hovering it. It shows on rollover which one you're hovering, but if you don't want to spend this time, you can simply click, okay, left one, select. Boom, you have it selected. That's great. Top bottom, I want this other one, select it. Uh, we're gonna implement the search layer, so if you rename your layer, you can type the name and it's gonna automatically, it's gonna filter all the layers, so it's gonna be easier to select. For now, we don't have it, so sorry about that. And of course, you can select, you can delete shapes and layers as you want. Uh, another cool thing about the layer panel, you can lock and hide a layer. So now I have this ellipse that is locked, even if it's selected, I cannot do anything. I'm trying to click and move it. Nothing is happening. So it's pretty fantastic. Uh, we have uh, also the ability to hide a shape. If it's hidden, it's not selectable. I can't select these other two, move them around. Uh, this one is not selectable. So poof, that's great. Uh, what else? What else? Unlock, unlock. Um, oh, reordering layer. So we have a great ordering thing here that you can do both with your keyboard shortcuts with the header bar buttons here or with your layers panel. So the bottom one is the rectangle five. You can drag and drop it above and it goes on, uh, if I do it right, on the first position. You can see it's still a little bit flimsy and that's my fault because I'm using these um, sort of like indicator of dropping indicator, but it's not super accurate because if you drop it on top, uh, it doesn't recognize it because you're dropping your layer on top of an element that is not on a layer, so it doesn't know where to put it. We are working on that to fix it. It's just a, a minor fix, but you can reorder your layers by drag and dropping, of course. You can reorder it by using this button, put it on top, put it straight at the bottom, or just go up, 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 and automatically the layer panel uh, readapts, or you can use your keyboard shortcut. So you can go control one, Control down, control up, or control, if I'm not wrong, the bottom is control shift and down. So go put on the bottom, control shift and down. Boom, it goes directly on the bottom. And this is uh, phenomenal. I really, really like it. Uh, you can learn all the accelerators, of course, by uh, mm, going on rollover on each button is gonna tell you what to do. And of course, all these things, all these uh, toggable and clickable button, they all have accelerator, which is which is pretty handy. Uh, let's talk about export. So we implemented two type of exports. Um, mm -mm -mm. We have the highlight area to export or export artboards or current selection. The export artboards doesn't work because the artboards, yes, we have them, but they're not, fully uh, implemented yet. We have an artboard and uh, the hardboard should actually, like all the elements that are here should be visible before the artboard. But the artboard is currently, artboard should always be underneath elements, never above, but the layers panel should show the artboards in the other way around. So when you have elements, layers inside the artboard should be underneath. So there's a lot of work that needs to happen. And that's that's long story short, but potentially once we have a bunch of artboards, you can simply uh, export all the artboards. And of course here it says no artboard available, but it's gonna show you a full export of all the artboards that you currently have in your page or in your design file and you can check on uncheck, like select, unselect, which artboard you want to export. Otherwise, there's this export area, which I'm very, very proud of. 
which you click here, you literally highlight the export, the area that you want to export, and this is going to generate a preview. In this preview, in this export panel, you can control the size, you can scale up and down your design file, it automatically gives you the final size, what you're going to get at the end, and the final approximate uh, file size. This is not super accurate, it's always wrong by uh, 10 kilobytes, a couple of kilobytes, uh, not uh, not much, but at least you have an overview of what you can do. You can scale it up if you want to two by two or by four, and it's all made, uh, these source codes, like the source code of this area, it's all made with a sync multi-threading. So it doesn't matter how big is this, uh, it's never gonna freeze your UI. I'm gonna do an experiment and see if Akira crashes. You can simulate uh, transparency, you can increase the compression. Uh, for now, it doesn't give you an overview, like a preview of how the final um, quality of the image is, but we're gonna work on that, we're gonna implement that. You can, for now, just export on PNG and JPEG, and you can change the uh, destination folder, and you can select where to export, and all these things are, remember, every time you change a parameter, it's remembering your settings. So if you keep exporting always in PNG scaled up twice on your dedicated folder with one compression, uh, it's gonna always remember those settings. You don't have to reset it all the time. It remembers the last settings that you have. So you can do an export, let's say this is a um, test picture, something like that, export. So I export any picture, export completed. It's super fast. I'm gonna open pictures, test picture. There you go, look at that. And it's a transparent PNG and we have the size is 2.5 megabytes. You see in the preview was 2.4 megabytes. It's slightly, slightly inaccurate, but we're gonna fix that as well. Uh, so let's simulate something massively uh, big. So I'm gonna scale down to 20% and I'm gonna create a shape that it's 4,000 by 4,000. Let's see if we can crush Akira. Actually, let's put it down. So we also have this. Uh, let's create an export area, which is gonna be probably 5K, like 5,000 by 5,000. Boom, uh, generating preview, generating the preview, and it fetched the size. So right now we are at 5,000 by 4,000 and it's a 95 megabyte image. If we scale it up four times, <laughs> this is gonna be a 20K image. Uh, let's see if it crashes, uh, click. Okay, it's generating, the UI is not freezing, it's taking a little bit, but it's gonna take like two, five, six seconds, how much, done. This was scaled and now it's fetching the uh, options for, uh, um, it's like it's fetching the um, preview of the size, file size, and file resolution. This takes a while because it needs to generate the actual image at the end, and then it needs to grab how much is gonna wait. And there you go. Look at this. We have twenty one hundred, so twenty one thousand five hundred by eighteen thousand four hundred pixel, and it's gonna wait thousand megabytes <laughs> oh my god it's oh god okay this is massive i'm not gonna export this but i'm gonna scale it down a little bit so generating preview uh you see when you scale down it's way faster because we were exporting a twenty thousand by twenty thousand image basically um the ui never froze i'm gonna export uh png with uh one compression so i see my uh resolution changes drastically and I'm gonna export in PNG I'm gonna start like uh, call it big big picture big brain and I'm gonna click export while it's exporting I can use my uh, it's already done okay sorry what I wanted to show you is while it's exporting you can change the UI you can change the design it doesn't matter it's not gonna affect your uh, your design here but if I open the pictures again Test picture, big picture, look at that. We have a 5,000 by 4,000 exported in PNG with one compression level. So it's phenomenal.
so happy about it. Uh, you can export the selection. So if you uh, select, uh, let me delete this because I don't want to stress my computer too much. But if you export something, for example, uh, you have this circle. This is an icon. I just want to export this. You can just select it and say, oh, export just the current selection. So automatically Akira recognizes, oh, let's export and grab you only the selection that you have. Uh, it doesn't work super well for now because if, for example, my selection is here, I want to export these image only and I do export current selection grabs everything that it's around so it gets the boundaries of your selection and grabs everything but uh, it doesn't really work for now uh, mm -mm -mm. This is good for slices. So this is a temporary implementation for later on when we're gonna have slices. Because for example, you have a, a rectangle here that encapsulates everything and then it's transparent. It's still selectable, but you don't have a border or a fill. So you can just select this and could be like, a, I don't know, you could call these a slice one. This is a slice. I want to export this. You select this so you can control the size and the position. And then you do export current selection and automatically exports what you have. So you don't have to drag and drop the highlight area and every time is a different size, you can create your slices and always have your slice. When you don't need the slices, you can lock them or hide them so you don't accidentally select them. But uh, yeah, this is the first step to implement slices. Like a slice is gonna be a different object that is completely different from the default object probably is going to be similar to the highlight area so it's going to be like a permanent highlight that you can move around and hide so all this good stuff uh what else uh i think that's almost pretty much it i mean uh you can control all the things like of course if you uh, select an image and you hit your arrow up and down uh, you can um, can it change these uh, left? Oh, it go. Oh, I found a bug. It goes just up and left. It doesn't go down and down. Why? Oh, because it's an accelerator. Okay, I have to deactivate accelerators in order to do that. It's fine. I know what's happening. Uh, but yeah, you can control with your arrow, of course, and you can move your objects. You can pan and drag around the uh, canvas. The canvas is uh, 10,000 by 10,000 resolution all around. It's massive and you can zoom in with control zoom, uh, control scroll bar up and down. You can uh, write like the click on the mouse wheel and drag it around or you can hit the space bar and click and drag. There are a lot of like quick little handy things uh the objective of akira is make it very intuitive to use very easy to use kind of like natural uh as you can see there are a lot of finicky things that uh we need to finish implementing but it's pretty fast it's fast it's stable uh Sometimes it's buggy, but it's easy to fix because the source code is very light and the source code is very easy to understand um what else uh we uh, let's actually go now on a quick overview on the uh, GitHub repository, and then I'm going to jump on the questions. Uh, so currently, what it's missing for a first alpha release. So we're going to release these as an elementary app, and then as a flat pack, and then as a snap, and maybe as an app image. I don't know about app images because they're based on Ubuntu 16.04, and it's Ubuntu 16.04, of course, is missing a lot of uh, GTK, current GTK, modern Vala and GTK library, the current version. So it doesn't really work. And I personally don't really like app images, but uh, if someone wants to package it for app images, we're totally fine with that. There's no, there's no problem. Um, what else? So in the alpha release wish list that we have here, you can see a lot of things are checked and this is very, very handy. Uh, one of the biggest thing that is left is of course the save of the file. So you need to save your project, you need to save your work. And uh, the save of the file is gonna be a version control uh, save, like a, a file that has a Git repository in it. So every time you save a file, we save a snapshot of that um saved file so you can always go back in history all like your single file is gonna 
contain the full history of your project. You can always go back and recover. It's kind of like Time Machine or uh, in, um, in Mac OS. And also, thanks to the Git repository built into the save file, every time you move something, uh, we're going to record that action as a commit. So uh, you're going to most likely have infinite undos. We're going to limit the number of undos, otherwise your file is going to get massive. But at least you always can uh, go back uh, to um, the previous status. Also, because it's a... Uh, local git repository even if you change something you save the file then you close the file you reopen it you can always control z because it remembers your previous uh changes so uh it's gonna be it's gonna be great <laughs> but uh there's a little preview of the save file like alberto was working on the uh, serialization of the file that we're trying to use and basically the final result of a file is gonna be something like this it's uh it's a script, uh, it's a JSON script that uh, keeps track of all the single objects and uh, we're gonna save these also as an SVG format so uh, you can have a preview of your file while you're browsing your file browser. But these being like, saving everything as a JSON format, it makes it super light and easy to have a Git history that makes sense because we're gonna remember the differences and we're gonna keep track of all the commits uh, and all this great stuff. So uh, yeah, this is, this is what's going on with Akira. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's jump on the question. I see there are a lot of questions here. So I'm going to jump right on the question and I'm going to go all the way up. So I'm sorry. Um, let's say, yeah, does it support blur? No, gash and blur, uh, all the extra things like uh, box shadows, all these fancy things will happen later. This is not even an alpha. We haven't released the first version officially yet. So there are a lot of things that are missing. Um, Uh, I'm going to ignore the uh, <laughs> questions about development, uh, about WordPress development, uh, how many people are working on, how many people are working on Akira? Right now we are three people in total. That's me, that's Giacomo Alberini, that it's in the chat, and that's Alberto Fanjul, that it's in Spain. Um, we are, it's the three of us. Uh, we have uh, another couple of people that sometimes help us, like Bilal, but it's very busy with work, and Felipe, it's very busy with work so mostly three uh three people when we have time um what about grouping uh grouping it's gonna happen <laughs> later uh, we're gonna uh, implement first the ability to multi-select because right now you cannot select more than one object at a time we're gonna implement the ability to multi-select and then we're gonna group uh we're gonna implement grouping we're, we're gonna of course have grouping uh if we don't it's gonna be pretty uh, silly application uh will it be possible to highlight the shapes outline when overing the name on the list Yes, uh, that's what I uh, said. Oh, it's still open, Akira. Sorry, I thought I'd close it. Yeah, that's a thing that we are implementing. We, we, will, we will implement. So right now, when you go and roll over here, it will hides the, um, the layer name. We're going to implement the other way around. When you go and roll over on the layer's name, it's going to highlight the shape. That's going to happen. Um, I think only GTK4 can create blur. No, uh, with GTK CSS, I think we can do blur, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, Proton is great, like Akira. Uh, okay. How cool is the error export? Super cool. Uh, Ciao, Leonardo. <laughs> uh 5000 by 5000 <laughs> yeah i say thousand instead of thousand because uh my english is good uh does this run on linux and Giacomo already answered it actually runs only on linux at the moment this is the linux focused application these we built this specifically to run and work on linux i'm running elementary OS right now this is not um uh, where is this this is not mac os this is elementary os uh, 5.1.2 uh, so it's just for Linux 
this is an application for Linux. Uh, other platforms later will it run on other platforms later? Maybe uh, it's not our main focus. Other platforms like Windows and macOS they have millions of alternatives so for UX design tools. So we don't we don't that's not our priority. Uh, the app image. So Donny R said the app image does not seem too open for me. That app image, ignore it completely. Uh, that was an experiment did like before downloading things, check the date when it was done. That was an experiment done a year ago, more than a year ago, before we had anything concrete to 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 actually code. It was just an experiment to see if how easy it was to generate an app image. That's completely empty, it's completely broken, it won't run, so just ignore it. Just, just, it's okay. We're gonna just follow us on Twitter. We're gonna have an official release of an alpha release with all the code that you can run a flat pack a snap application and you can easily test it uh giacomo said something very important the idea is to make it run in linux in the first place and then port to other platform linux is our primary target and focus right now but gtk plus is cross-platform so it can be ported absolutely um um lawrence hello lawrence uh asks uh documentation have you began on this no uh we haven't started writing a fully um, fledged documentation because we're still in a alpha cycle so things change a lot a lot of things that we thought oh this is gonna work that way no it's gonna just like we rebuilt it and we we, we started from scratch so changes completely mm, that's why we're gonna start coding or we're gonna start writing a fully a full documentation right before the first release candidate so close to the first proper version one so that's that's the goal of that uh, writing documentation now will be it's kind of silly it wouldn't wouldn't work uh kiko writes i was thinking about it because the cool part of open source project is to be cross-platform but it makes sense to focus on one platform and import the rest yeah is there any plan for svg export or you think it's redundant because you can make an inkscape and that is not the scope of akira oh no 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 yeah svg export and import it's absolutely it's gonna happen it's a it's not a priority right now right now we need a, a function in software <laughs> uh, and of course right now we don't have any uh, vector sh like all the shapes that you can create is just a rectangle like we don't have any pencil option vector option you can now create splines or or lines and things like that so you can like exporting a, a, a rectangle in SVG is kind of silly so once we have a more functioning uh, interface and an application we're going to implement the SVG in all together. Um, mm -mm. What else? SVG is, or at least will be, a first class citizen in Akira. Yeah, as Giacomo said. Can he import images? Yes. Dev AL can import images. So you can import image and select uh, future live uh, PNG image. Boom. And it's imported. Automatically, when you import an image, actually, let me. Uh, get out of the way when you import an image uh it locks the ratio so it remembers the original ratio of the image and you have your image here and you can uh do, 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 do. you can rotate it and you can lock the rotation to 50 degrees so it's it's always consistent you can change the opacity you can change the size yeah you can import images so it's pretty good and recognize the image uh oh the image doesn't create the layer panel ah, ah, ah giacomo layers panel images <laughs> sorry it's okay um what else um morgan probably have to be from source compiling about missing shares uh, yeah no ignore the the app image how are you how are you documenting the UX part of the project, like the interfaces inside GitHub? Yes, so inside GitHub, we have every time we want to imp implement something, everything is done through issues. So for example, we have this issue here as an example, how hardcore should behave. Uh, there's a full list of expected behavior, what it needs to be done, the layers panel, how it has to interact. And then we use some, um, we go around, I as a UX designer, I use Sketch, Figma, all these good uh, professional software. So I see what they're doing it right, 
and I, I do a little screen cap on how things should behave and, and then we discuss in the in the issue like what are the pros, what are the cons, how it can be done and blah blah blah. It's all done in the open and everyone can contribute here. In the issues we have like everything like flip item on resize, import SVG, implement history manager, select colors, uh, different keyboard layouts, designing a smart like we, we have like if we're fully open on all the process because this is a thing that it's very complicated, so we need as much as possible. Um, Morgan said, the app image 2017. Yes, three years old, so... <laughs> um, then Linux user also web solutions, Kiko says. Um, I guess Akira should care about cross-platform as well. No, that's absolutely wrong. I'm sorry, Kiko, but that's absolutely wrong. Uh, you cannot do uh, like work professionally on UX and UI design by using a web application. Web applications are not reliable. Web applications are buggy, are slow, uh, are uh, CPU hungry. They destroy your RAM. Uh, you shouldn't rely on those things. Those are terrible. Cross-platform application is not the answer. And the... Uh, obvious uh, what can i say is the like the the confirmation of this theory uh it's sketch sketch is a mac os only application and is the number two software used in the world like right below uh, figma uh, i think uh it's one of the top three we have like figma adobe xd and uh, Sketch. Sketch is one of the top three most used UX design application, and it's only for macOS. It's just one platform, and that's it. It You don't have to be cross-platform to be successful. You don't have to be cross-platform to appeal to the audience. You have to have a focused and very targeted software that works well. If your software uh, doesn't work well in any platform, it doesn't matter if it's cross-platform, it won't be adopted. And the, the reason why we decided to go Linux only is because we are three people. We don't have the resources to handle, maintain, and code for cross-platform. We made a decision. Linux is the is the platform that lacks professional UX design applications. There's none of it. And web solutions don't work nicely, don't work as expected. So we're focusing on just one platform. In the future, if it happens, if we have the resources, we're gonna go macOS and Windows as well. But that's not the primary objective and that's not our focus and purpose. We want to offer a perfectly crafted and beautifully programmed application just for one platform so we can focus on that and that's our objective. Sorry if I'm, I'm aggressive. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just passionate about this thing. So sometimes I come out a little bit too aggressive. But it's, it's, a very, it's, it's a very smart question. So thanks for asking. Absolutely makes total sense. Uh, Draman asks, any CSS properties? Yes, in the future, we're going to implement the ability to handle a GTK CSS. Uh, so you can write uh, your GTK CSS or you can add some properties and then export those properties as GTK, as CSS properties. So you can copy that and paste it in your code, whatever. Can we save uh, the project like project name.akira? Later, yes. That's what I talked about before. It's going to happen. Does text tool support RTL languages? Not yet. Text tool doesn't really work for now. Uh, so uh, it's... Um, you can add text, but there's nothing there. So you're going to hit T and write, add text here. So this is just a, um, a proof of concept. Yes, we can have text here, but it's not writable. It's not editable. In the future, we're going to have full rich text, RTL, uh, controlling everything. Don't worry. Um, Danny asks, what's the plan for reusable component, I I creating button primary component based on a button default like in Figma? Yes, that's a very good plan here. And there's a, a GitHub issue here. Mm, where is it? Uh, 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 left panel, UI mockups, uh, change mouse, mockups, constant behavior, create symbol and using symbol. So this user, Vixen, created this super in-depth um, issue on GitHub, uh, checking how the
be very software how sketch and adobe xd and figma they create components and handle components and then did a bunch of mock-ups on how to uh we can implement this and we started discussing it so there are plans in the future to handle components he did these beautiful mock-ups to see oh this is how the akira uh layer components you can create effects and then um, uh just grab the components that you want and implement them mm, uh, here probably yeah you can grab something save as a element and then you have your library where it organizes everything by category so you can reuse reusable components and yeah that's that's the objective <laughs> so it's totally in the scope it's gonna probably have uh, like happen after version one uh, version two maybe so yeah uh if gene if genie said what's up i want to say thank you very much thanks for you i'm learning plugin developing please man don't stop doing your uh, yeah oh, thank you no i'm not gonna stop <laughs> thanks for watching my videos um indeed linux lacks of UI UX design software, I'm happy this will come on Linux. Yeah. Uh, Kiko says, I disagree. Web platforms aren't reliable for professional work. Figma is totally fine as an alternative for Sketch, even considering the performance, use it professionally for a huge project. I'm, that's great. I'm very happy uh, that it works for you. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work for me. Um, our also, it's a totally valid point, and I agree with you, Kiko. Um, I um, the uh, our objective also is to make Akira run on very old computers, on old machines. Uh, one of the problem of web-based application, act electron apps, you need uh, a good CPU at least, and and. 16 gigs of ram like a good amount of ram memory and a good cpu otherwise it's gonna get pretty slow pretty fast it's power hungry like electron apps are power hungry so our objective is to have a native application that can run big projects without relying on a quad core or an eight core and run on very old hardware so it's a matter of yeah offering solutions for people that cannot afford uh super powerful computer and unfortunately electron apps still can't quite do that but that's a very good point here so thanks for sharing uh lauren says i'm blown away by the progress of the project the level of details is amazing thank you and kiko writes congrats for this project it's becoming really cool keep it up thank you so much um the other question i want to discuss was a question that it's really important to me because I, uh, they keep asking this question over and over and I answer it a million times, but it's better to answer it again. So the question, is, I got it from uh, Fostodon here, um, Akira from Floppy. A floppy disk wrote me and I'm gonna get a sip of water while you write, read the question. Mm. Anyway. He says, the features of the current development stage remind me of vector graphics editors such as Inkscape. Yes, of course, vector graphics and UX design are not the same objectives. Uh, but nevertheless, I was wondering, what functionalities are you aiming for on the long run? In other words, what justifies creating a separate program instead of a sophisticated plugin for Inkscape, leverage already existing features? That's a very good question that I get asked over and over again, and it's a very good concern. So the short answer is that uh, if you ever used Figma or Sketch or Affinity or Affinity Designer or Adobe XD, you know how from a workflow point of view, from a, 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 a user interface point of view are way better than than Inkscape in doing UX and UI design. Inkscape is a, a magnificent software. It's beautiful. It's it's perfect. It's massive. It's a it's a wonderful project and it's super powerful. But it wasn't created some ten of some years ago when it was wasn't created with the objective of this is going to be a UX a UI design software. So it has a lot of things to do a lot of crazy stuff like the sprint design options there's a mesh change support there's um, a million different features 
And that's the first reason why we didn't go that way. Originally, actually, originally, before starting prototyping Akira and thinking about it, I thought I can do a fork of Inkscape. I can do a fork of GIMP. I can create a plugin for GIMP or create a plugin for Inkscape. I tried, but it was barely impossible. The interface is too drastically different. Uh, we, I, I wouldn't... I would have not been able to change things the way I wanted to uh, follow the proper paradigms of a professional UX design application in order to change Inkscape. That wouldn't be a simple plugin. It would have been a fork. And why fork in a software that has so much technical debt like Inkscape and it's built in a language C++, which is, there's a lot of overhead in C++. There's uh, the header uh, files, the CPP files. There's a lot, of, a lot of components intertwined with each other. It's very complex to understand a project as big and as powerful as Inkscape. It was way easier to start from scratch, follow the proper paradigms, and just have a very narrow focus. Uh, not doing something broad, oh, this software is going to do uh, icon design and UI design and print design and and, and, and what else? Like It was a, a decision to be as narrow and simple as possible. And also, there's the always good sentence, like the the an advice that they gave me a lot of years ago. I don't remember who told me this, but it's it's a common knowledge that you should always stick to that. And the advice is never build your house on someone else's backyard. Akira is a project that I want to support and keep working and keep coding for the next 20, 30 years. I want this to be the next big thing for Linux because it's necessary, because we need something like that. And I don't want to spend all this time coding this thing on someone else's code. Because if one day Inkscape decides, no, we don't like this, or they change the API, so they change the interface, or they change something that breaks completely my code, I'm done. Uh, I need to fork it, I need to support it, I need to support something that I haven't created from scratch. So it's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, and for something this big, you shouldn't you shouldn't rely on, on someone else. Like you shouldn't build your house on someone else's backyard because if they turn on the sprinklers, you're going to get all wet. And that's the the, the generic answer. Uh, let's continue. Uh, is this going to be a sketch alternative? I like boxy SVG interface, but still not powerful. Uh, yes, it's going to be like, not really an alternative, but it's going to be like a... Uh, a sketch for Linux, basically. Um, Kiko has an amazing good point. Uh, yes, you're right. So Kiko wrote, what Sketch did in comparison to Illustrator was to start clean. To fork Inkscape will be the opposite, to start complex. That's exactly the point. It's the comparison between Illustrator and Sketch. When Sketch came out, uh, no one said, like, probably someone said, like, ah, we don't need Sketch. We have Photoshop for web design. Like, why do we need Sketch? Because it's a completely different interface. It's a completely different paradigm. And it's a completely different objective of a software that removes all the extra things that you don't need in Photoshop and Illustrator and created that. And that's what we're doing with Akira. Uh, Maurizio, hello. Um, thanks for thinking about Linux. Uh, very welcome. I use Linux every, every day. So. Keep the good job, guys. A question on the side. How things are going on Thunderbird UI? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, I can do a live streaming on Thunderbird if you want. Uh, there are a lot of amazing things that are implemented in the UI of Thunderbird. Uh, it's very hard to code that because it's a massive software, but uh, I can do a live streaming on Thunderbird if, you, if you're interested. Uh, AB asks, is it going to support plugins and it's okay to be simple and plugins will help? Yes. Uh, we have an issue open also here, if I'm not wrong. Uh, plugin, 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 plugin extension support. Yes. Uh, so we started talking about it. Uh, we started uh, loading up some generator. Uh, we started thinking about how to use it. We have uh, GNOME offers some libraries to have 
um, some some um, plugins, and there was a long discussion on how to do or how to not to do it. So yes, it's in the future. Probably also plugins is gonna happen in version two. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna give you the option to code all your extensions and make it as complicated as possible. Um, one thing about plugins that we would like to do, it's that it's very complicated, is we're trying to do it code agnostic. So we don't want to force developers to, oh, you just have to code in Vala in order to have that plugin working with us. No, uh, we wanted to be able to support Python scripts and C++ scripts and Vala scripts or Rust scripts or whatever. So we want to do it code agnostic and uh, based on event modeling. So yeah, that's going to be complicated, but that's, that's the future. Um, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna give you a little preview of the alpha release. So, uh, and well, I just gave you the preview of the alpha release. There's a little quirks and things to, to fix, but uh, we are going to release an alpha, probably, finger crossed, in less than a month. So before the end of March, we're gonna release the alpha. Because if you go in the GitHub repository and check the alpha release wish list, the only massive thing that is left is the save file format, which I started to work on and which I'm working and I'm going to be focusing on the rest of the month. The other small things like search layers by name, control the alignment related to the canvas artboard, um, the snapping feature. So if you have a shape on top of an artboard, the, the shape should snap to the edge of the artboard and the alert dialog before closing if a diagram hasn't been saved, it's related to the save. These things, uh, the only big thing is the save file. Everything else is very simple to implement we already have in place the code it's just a matter of like some conditions and functions so we are very very close to an alpha release that we're aiming before the end of this month to have an alpha and the alpha will be will be released first on the elementary OS um app center because it's based on the elementary OS uh dev like sdk so it's easier for us to release that after we have the release we're going to spin out a flat pack and a snap application um, flat pack should be pretty straightforward. A snap, we have a code, but we haven't built a snap at all by ourselves, but we're going to try to do it. Uh, if you're a snap developer or an app image developer, and you want to contribute, just jump on board and we can do everything through GitHub actions and we have some automations in place. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's the announcement. <laughs> we're going to have an alpha release before the end of the month. Um, Thunderbird stream, yes. Why choose Vala to develop Akira instead of C, C++, or Python? So, Dev, uh, Vala is an ob object-oriented language, prog uh, programming language created by uh, GNOME, created and supported by GNOME. So, it has native bindings for GTK, which was the toolkit that we decided to use because we love GTK. It's super powerful and super clean and easy to uh, to control and manipulate. So native bindings for GTK and full bindings for GTK was our first objective. Like we need a language that uh, has native bindings for GTK. We don't have to think around and then and, and lose whatever, like lose hours in trying to find how to bind something. And then we realize the library is not supported. It's supported and built by the GNOME folks. So it's it's going to be compatible. It's fully compatible with GTK3. It's going to be compatible with GTK4. Still under development. It's not a dead language. Uh, um, it doesn't matter what other people say. It's not a dead language. It's, it's just because it doesn't have as many projects built in Vala. It doesn't mean that it's a dead language. Um, there are full operating systems. Like there are uh, desktop environments fully built in Vala. Elementary OS is an example. You have a, like an entire operating system, an entire desktop environment built in Vala. It can do, it's fast. It can do a million things and the source code, it's very easy and clean to understand. So the question was like, why Vala can do, why you can, can you build a, a desktop environment in Vala by, why can you not build a UX design application in Vala? And it was super easy to code and, and, 
uh, and and pick it up and learn the documentation the valadoc it's so good i i like it a lot it's very easy to use and understand so that's why we decided to go with vala mm -hmm. um so Danny writes, easier than C, C++, but still possible to compile native code. Yes. Uh, please don't make plugin system like Sublime Text, which has Python support only. Uh, no, we will try not to do that. Um, yes, and Vala also natively compiles in C, so it runs perfectly, runs native applications, and it's so good. Uh, how much about Vala is needed to know to help the project? Uh, not much. Uh, Vala is a, it's a very easy language to, to learn. If you know, uh, absurdly enough, if you know PHP, like object-oriented programming PHP with classes and methods, you can navigate a Vala file. The language, it's like, it's very clean and beautiful and easy to use. You, uh, it took me like a couple of months to learn Vala and release my first application, which was SQLer. So it wouldn't take you that much. Uh, maybe for more complicated things, it's going to take you a, a little bit, but uh, it's it it's not it's not impossible. It's not like jumping on a 10 years old C++ application and trying to figure out, oh my God, what is this? Um... Bogdan has some explanations, dependencies for compiling on other Linux distro. I'm used to compile from source in Arch when it's not in official repos. Uh, sure, we're gonna do that. I mean, there's a, you can install the dependency. Oh, it's all, I think it's all Debian based. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we're gonna have some documentation about that. Um, but we will find someone to put the source code and everything in the package in the AUR for Arch. Uh, because that's important. Uh, problem with design programs for Linux is lack of compatibility between them. Uh, yeah, you're right. So Manga writes uh, an Adobe program, for example, the programs are completely compatible uh, so that we can easily migrate a file from uh, one program to another and it helps a lot in workflow. Do you want to develop a Kira in a way that it has a good compatibility with our programs designed for Linux design, Game Creator, or Inkscape? Uh, yes, yes, I would love to do that. Um, that's kind of like, it's part of the objective, like being able to right click on your file and export images to GIMP or like import a file to GIMP. Or if you import a, a, a GIMP file or a Krita file, and then you update the file in Krita, automatically in Akira will be refreshed and, and, and reloaded. So that's the objective that's the final like the the final vision like a 20 years down <laughs> in the future is to have a sort of like an a creative cloud like a not cloud not cloud a creative suit suite creative suite like adobe that you have all your uh gimp that interfaces with akira that you can export or import vector icons made in inkscape and then you can have your brushes imported from krita and all these crazy things that are just pitballing here but that's that would be the dream absolutely mm. how did you all figure out how to use the system libraries valadoc seems kind of bare bones in terms of documentation right oh not at all but Val valadoc is is massive um libraries are easy to use because it's written the name of the library is written in the doc as well so for example if you want to use uh let's say cairo i want to use cairo first of all the name of the library is here you have the url and links to what you need in order to compile and install it and then for example if you want to create a new cairo context you go here uh and you have a list of creation methods so you know that you can write new Cairo context, you need a surface. Oh, I need a surface as a target. Uh, so let's click on surface and it goes on the surface. In order to create a surface, you have a creation matter. You can create a surface from a rectangle and you need a target, uh, X, Y width and height. So it takes a little bit to understand how to read the documentation, but once you read it, it's very easy, it's, it's very straightforward. And there are the, Go Canvas bindings also. Oops, Go Canvas. Uh, we're using the Go Canvas library, the Go library here that all has all the bindings that we're using to um, build Akira. So yeah, it's it's super super dandy, super good. 
Sequel or Need Some Love? Yeah, I know. I'm coding Akira a lot, so I don't have much time for Sequel uh, because I'm already not sleeping much to code Akira, but yeah. Uh, regarding Vala, I think there is one good playlist in YouTube. <laughs> yeah, my playlist. You want to plug my own playlist? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, are there any more questions? Otherwise, it's been an hour, so I think um, it's almost ready to go, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, a couple of uh, plugs here. Uh, if you want to support the project, you can work with us or Akira UX. Um, you can uh, check the uh github repository here uh even if you don't know how to code you can participate and discuss in the issues uh we do all our design process our old prototyping process all up in the open so you can jump on an issue and you can contribute with your comment uh, if you're a designer and you really like how figma works or how sketch works you can say hey this section of sketch is very good uh, i wish it was in akira we can discuss that absolutely. If you're a developer, of course, uh, you can get one of the million open issues or check on the alpha release and see what uh, we need to do and you can contribute to it. Otherwise, you can uh, toss us a coin, toss a coin to your software, or Valley of Penguins, um, and you can uh, just support us on Patreon. We do some uh, uh, weekly development update on Patreon where we give you a preview of what we're merging with animated GIFs and stuff like that. Uh, you can also support us on LibrePay. We have, uh, this is more international, uh, support us and automatically goes to the participant. Oh, uh, Giacomo, I have to add you here. Um, so you can donate us on uh, Patreon or LibrePay or if you don't want to do any of that just follow us on Fostodon at Akira UX or on Twitter Akira UX and share share whatever you uh, boop, 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 Akira UX on Twitter here profile there you go uh, tweet it retweet uh share the project uh ask questions let us know whatever um whatever you want to do whatever you want to you want to have on akira and we will try to make it happen uh morgan said thank you for your work and contribution to linux i'm very happy i'm very happy about it so this is a, a dream project that i wanted to make it happen for the past five years, probably. Uh, last year, we launched a Kickstarter campaign that failed. Uh, Kickstarter campaign, uh, in the Kickstarter, actually, we wrote, if we manage to reach the goal, we're gonna have uh, an alpha release for Akira in three months. If we don't reach the goal, we're gonna probably have an alpha release in a year the kickstarter campaign ended in march last year so it's been one year round and we're almost ready to launch an alpha release so we kept our promises and we worked a lot on this software the source code it's clean i love the source code it's very clean and easy to understand all the features and the intuitive interface it's it's i just love it and i I, I just want to make it happen. And I want to also thank all the people that, especially on Reddit, <laughs> when we launched the project the first time, they just uh, bashed us. They just like attacked us, telling us that we're not good, that we like, why we should trust you? Like, you're no one. Ah, this is a stupid project. This is a scam. You're going to just steal a warm bunny and not do anything. Some people said this is impossible, will never gonna happen, or like, ah, why don't you just fuck off? <laughs> Some people were very aggressive. Uh, I want to thank them because their negativity and aggressiveness gave me motivation to prove them wrong. So all these sleepless nights and coding weekends instead of going out and enjoying my day or resting or just like 
focusing on other things, I just spend hours and hours uh, coding on Akira. And I want to thank absolutely all the contributors or the developers that work with Giacomo, amazing Alberto, is amazing Bilal and, and Felipe, and all the people like you that constantly just interact with us on social media and, and give us your feedback. Uh, positive and negative that is uh it's fine as far as there's feedback as far as there's an answer it means that it's you guys are interested in the project so i'm 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 super happy about it and we hope that with time we will deliver a professional ux design application for linux so we want to empower every designer to do amazing work on linux so Thank you so much, guys, for participating. And uh, until the next one, happy coding. And yes, I'm going to do probably a live streaming on Thunderbird UX. And I want to show you the source code of Thunderbird because that's complicated to handle. But yeah, uh, thank you all. Have a great rest of the day, uh, the night, the weekend. And I talk to you soon. Bye.